<laughs> Hello there. Whoopee! Uh, uh, How's the, uh... How are we coming? Thank you. It's almost well. Thank We're you very much. We're walking wounded here the past yeah. couple of days. Okay. You, are you taking some kind of medication, medication for that? Medication, yes. Several pills. <laughs> yes. Now, you don't take... You don't take alcohol, do you? Why do you take those pills? No. Because they say most medications, if you take alcohol... That's right. Here's what it says. It says, do not operate heavy machinery while oh, taking this medication. That's going to ruin I your weekend. I have no plans to operate heavy machinery <laughs> yeah. anyway. So. Well, usually on a weekend, you get on a John, John Deere plow or something. Yes. And it'll, have, have to get <laughs> Can you see that? Oh, I get a strange thing. <laughs> it's like does odds this, and ends. Does this look like me? A letter from a Ken Elkins. It's a, yeah. Get a shot of that. He says, didn't know you had a sideline. That looks a lot like you. Yeah, it's a guy who takes care of horses' teeth. <laughs> Dr. Or, Carson. A horse orthodontist? Yeah. Actually, I do do that for a sideline. Side that was one of your Clydesdales, I think. <laughs> Remember the other night during the monologue when I told a joke that did not go too well? Oh, and the guy in the audience? Some yeah. guy did the... Yeah. The bomb sound? Yeah. Yeah. Can you do that? Uh, no. Yeah. And he got a big laugh. That's the sound he That's made. the guy. Uh, uh, Forrest Mims, I guess it is, from Twin Oak uh, Sequin, Texas, brought this in to Jim McCauley of our staff. Uh, apparently was wanted to be helpful during a monologue. It's called a monologue bomb box. <laughs> and apparently Mr. Mim is into computers, and he made right. this little thing up, and he says, what you do, close red switch for first bomb. In other words, you tell yeah. a joke, it doesn't go. And you do yeah. that. <laughs> Press additional switch for each additional bomb. Oh, this guy oh, knows, not go, this guy knows I'm in trouble. So the next time I go out to do monologues, I'm taking this I'll with me, and you, you carry that. Yeah. What, what is that that does that now? How would this work? I don't know. Have no Anybody idea. know anything about computers? He said, turn the switch slowly, because it's the, t the tape of the control is logarithmic. I'm certainly happy about that. So am I. <laughs> Excuse me? A small canary. That sounds like a small canary. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> open it up, please. You can open it up. No, I don't want to open it up. It wouldn't make any difference if I did open it. I wouldn't understand no. it anyway. All right. When is the officially the Russian summit coming up? It was postponed, I think, about two weeks now. This is when the first. president will actually be go to Mark. Is he not making a speech? next week about going to the summit? Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, it seems interesting. We don't know a great deal of, about the Russian people, right? No. Because apparently they don't carry a lot of things, although they did carry, I guess, last week, excerpts from a speech or an interview that uh, Reagan had with four Soviet journalists. But you can tell an awful lot about a culture by watching their television. That is so true. Hmm? That is so true. Well, most people who come to this country, we found out, if they come from France or Germany, learn to speak English by watching mm -hmm. television, and they watch and judge Americans by what they see on television. Well, at great personal risk. Amazing, you were able to get that. We have our Tonight Show agent has smuggled out of Russian television, a Russian television magazine, here it is right here, TV Guidesky. <laughs> First time... First ever in America. First time ever in this country. Our hats off to our, our brave agent. I can't, of course, reveal his identity. Oh, no. I can tell you his code name, Frank Williams. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. That's his name. His code name, his code name is Wildfire. Wild. Oh, sorry about that, Frank. Uh, you're, you're on your own now. <laughs> Give it away. Anyway, here are some of, the, some of the programs that are very big in Russia. We thought you might like to hear some, but of course you We will. would. We will find out. TV guys, let's see. The Love Trawler. <laughs> Says after his entire crew seeks political asylum during shore leave, Captain Ivan Stubing is forced to make love to 500 aging starlets all by himself. That's the one that's playing over there next week. Let's see, here's a sports program. Olympic preview, 1988 in which the Russian sportscaster shows how they're preparing for the games, namely by getting ready to get put knockout drops in Mary Lou Retton's Wheaties. <laughs> oh, 
tell you Mr. Mims knew what he was talking about. <laughs> Lifestyles of the rich and decadent. <laughs> Profiles of the glamorous and elite in Russia, such as a man who owns three pairs of jockey shorts and a woman who shaves her legs twice a year. <laughs> Soviet 60 Minutes. Now, did you know about that? that? It's only shown in Russian courts, where political prisoners are given their choice of going to Siberia or watching a few minutes with Andy Rooney. <laughs> Here's a show that focuses on Russian show business called Hardly in a, in Any Entertainment Tonight. And of, course, of course, when the announcer does it over there, he speaks it correctly and doesn't uh, garble it like I did. It's called Hardly in Any Entertainment. <laughs> Tonight. Hardly any entertainment tonight. Frankly, there isn't much of it, folks. <laughs> For example, one entire program is devoted to watching the maiden ad of a Bolshoi ballet dancer or rinse out of a bushka. That's it. Ah, <laughs> say, here's a Saturday afternoon show for Russian teenagers. Anti-American bandstand. <laughs> okay. Hosted by the very young-looking Dick Clarksky. Hilarious sitcom starring Soviet Premier Mikhail Gorbachev, who disguises himself as a bartender at the San Diego Waterfront Saloon and tries to buy a submarine secret from American sailors called Mikhail's Navy. <laughs> Somebody's doing it. I didn't touch it. <laughs> what else do we have here? Khrushchev's comedy classics. <laughs> In one classic sketch, the zany former president steams President Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis by squirting him with water through a gag hotline phone. Remember that? <laughs> My mother, the tank. About a mother who's reincarnated a tank. Let's see what else we have. Golden Girls. They have that over there? Mm. It's about a group of old women with white hair, wrinkles, and no teeth. But unlike the American version, this Golden Girls is not a sitcom. It's the title of their beauty pageant. <laughs> Rapper John, KGB. <laughs> the Dukes of Hungary. <laughs> About a couple of good old boys, the show was canceled because it was supposed to feature car chases, but they could only find one car. <laughs> the Russian version of Dynasty. Boy, I had no idea. In the first episode, the Russian Alexis in, uh, instigates the invasion of Afghanistan because she said she's always wanted to sleep with 500,000 goat herders. <laughs> and Starstrip Search. Hey. Host Ed McManovich forces two aspiring young comics to take off their clothes because he suspects them of stealing his stolish naya. That's, those are some of the shows over there. Stealing his stolish naya. Okay. I gotta leave early tonight. Uh, <laughs> at first glance, that's Russian how, television is not great. That's how, we just proved how bad it is. Yeah, that's right. All right, we have um, a fascinating actress. Uh, I just met her briefly backstage, but I'm a good admirer of hers. Miss Lee Goldman is here. We have Lee Greenwood, a composer and singer, and comedian Larry Miller. And we'll return in just a moment.